Hello, my name is Adrian, and in today's video, I thought we'd take a look at push notifications for React Native. Doing push notifications with a mobile phone is actually an easy thing if you know what you're doing. There's a lot of different ways you can achieve it, such as local push notifications, scheduled ones, and even remote ones. We're going to take a look at a library called OneSignal, which is a very useful library that does all the heavy lifting for you. It's actually free up to about 30,000 users, and it's good to get you started. It works for both Android and iOS. So we're going to cover quite a few different things in this video. We're going to make sure that you can install OneSignal on your React Native project. From there, we'll make sure that all the dependencies are properly set up so the library actually functions. Then we'll want to have a look at generating a certificate for the iOS stores and the Android stores so we can perform those push notifications. Then we'll have a look at OneSignal and its functionality and we can have a look at what sort of things we can get it to do once a person clicks on that push notification. Finally, we'll have a look at OneSignal's website and we'll see if we can create some test groups, some segments, and just more or less how it functions. So if you're ready to get started, if you like this kind of content, hit like, hit subscribe, and let's just jump right into it. Here's the website for OneSignal. They've got a great source of information on how to get started on the web, on mobile, and even on emails. Their documentation is some of the best. Let's jump in and have a look. They've got information on how to get started, doesn't matter what platform you're on. In this case, we're just going to have a look at the React Native SDK setup and have a look at the steps they recommend to get you up and running. In here, we'll start off that uh, we have to create a OneSignal account and we'll have to make sure that the keys and IDs are set up. So let's get started on that. All right, so let's click here and let's log in. I've already logged in, so it's probably going to sign me straight in, but you might have to create a new account. In here, we'll create a new app. We'll call this au.org.bushfirefront. That'll be in the name of our application. It's usually the full domain that the application is on, uh, the website domain that is. So let's do that now and click create. So the next thing we'll need to do is actually create an application for the Apple ID. Uh, we'll do this by going to the Apple developer account at developer.apple.com. And from here, we'll want to go to certificates and IDs. And from there, we'll want to select the option uh, identifiers. Here, we'll create a new identifier for the bushfire front. It'll be an app ID. We'll click continue. We'll do it as uh, bushfire, bushfire front. And for the bundle, we're going to put in au.org.bushfire front. Great. Let's make sure all the settings are enabled here. We'll want to enable push notifications, which we'll set up soon. Otherwise, let's click, let's click continue and register. So that's in there now. We'll create a certificate now in the Apple system. We'll do this by going into the doco. And here we've got the option for using OneSignal's provisioning tool. We can also do this manually, but personally, it's much easier to do the provisioning tool. We'll get started in here and we'll log into our Apple account ID. Next, we'll want to select the team you're on. I'm on a personal team, so I'll just select that. Finally, we'll want to select the application we're doing here. In this case, I've selected the bushfire front and you just hit generate. So the certificates have been generated. It's a good idea now to download all three of them and take note of your password and save these in a safe location. Great, so if that's done, we can now jump into OneSignal and we can select Apple iOS and upload the certificate. This is a pretty simple step. You just literally drag and drop the certificate in and set your password. And then we can actually now start setting up our SDK. Let's do this now. Let's scroll down here and select React Native. And in here, we should get an ID, which we'll be able to copy paste into our project. So let's get a project up and running and we can have a look at how we can use this. Let's open up the terminal and in here we'll browse to our GitHub directory and we'll run npx uh, react-native init bushfire front and we'll create a new application for our iOS. This will start installing all the packages we need to get started and after that's done we'll install the packages for OneSignal. Let's have a look what they are. We'll jump in here and we'll have a look at the next lot of steps. In here, we can see that we need to add react-native-1signal. 
So let's copy that across. And once this is done, we'll paste this right in and it should get us up and running. So I think this is more or less done. Let's open up a folder in VS Code and make sure that we can jump into the directory. I'm just going to do that now. We'll go into GitHub, Bushfire Front, open that up. And it looks like it's all being set out here. Uh, it's still installing some dependencies, so we'll just wait for that to finish up. Uh, what we can do in the meantime is we can open up the console here. We can copy paste the command. So once this terminal process has finished, we can kick it off. Great, looks like that's done. Let's jump to VS Code and let's run the command to add the library. This should be done in no time. Next, let's jump back to our doco and have a look what next steps are required. If we scroll down here, we can see that we also need to link the library. Older versions of React Native, you didn't have to do this, but one signal hasn't updated the library yet, so you still have to manually do this. Uh, you do this by just running react native space link space react native dash one signal. Now uh, we've got to add the npx at the start and that should link it. Next, we'll have to also install the pods. So you do this by browsing into the pod directory and running pod install. Let's jump back into VS Code and do this now. There, so those should be installing now. Uh, if you've finished updating those, you need to CD back into your main directory and that should be more or less it. The next lot of steps now are about what we need to do to install the dependencies manually into our configuration files. We'll skip the Android section and we'll jump straight into the iOS section. We'll want to open up Xcode and with that, we'll want to browse to our project. Let's do this now. We'll jump into GitHub, we'll select Bushfire Front, browse into iOS and we'll want to select the XC workspace. Let's open that up. And in here we'll have an empty project. If we select the main project file and have a look at the steps required, we have to click on capabilities and select background modes and enable remote notifications. So let's do this. We'll go here. Uh, we'll attach it to our project, which is here. Uh, we'll have to set a new bundle and the bundle in this case is called uh, au.org.bushfirefront. So I think that's done it okay. Um, next up, we'll have to add the capability. So we'll click here and type in push notifications. It's shown up. So it seems it's been added here and I think that should be it. It's a little bit different than the visualization that one signal has provided, but Xcode has been updated since then. So it is a little bit different. Next, we'll want to add the notification service extension. We'll do this through Xcode by selecting file, new and target. Let's jump in and do that now. File, new and target. In here, we'll want to copy the notification service extension text and paste that in here and click next. In here, we'll want to set up the settings, which is to have the correct name, the organization being one signal and the language being objective C. So that looks all good. So next, we'll want to install the final bit of code here for the pod file. Uh, we'll just copy this into the pod file, which is located in your iOS folder under pod file. We'll put it right here at the top and save that. Next, we'll need to CD into the pod folder. So let's see it into iOS and then type in pod install. And that should install the new extension service. Finally, if we have a look in here, we need to open notificationservice.m and copy this code in. So let's do this now. Let's copy this in and find this notification service.m file. If we jump into VS Code, go into our project and have a look in here, we should be able to find it. Here it is under one signal. And it was .m. So let's do that here. Open this one out and replace all of this. That looks good. Let's CD back out. And I think that should be all the steps for iOS now complete.
So now we can start actually using the library. Let's jump into our app.js folder and get rid of everything in here. Let's run rnc, which is short syntax to complete a component. And in here, we'll also import one signal. We'll run import one signal from one signal. Let's have a look at the syntax we need to use. We'll need to do a constructor and we'll need to initialize one signal by calling dot init and passing in one signal's app ID. Let's do that now. Here we'll copy paste the code and here in one signal we've got the app ID. Let's copy paste that in as well. That should be it. Now we're gonna do the most important step we're going to run the emulator and see if it actually works. We'll run npx react-native run-ios. This will load up iOS. I've already done this and here we've got our simulated emulator. And as you can see, push notifications are already coming up and we need to allow them for them to work. Let's hit allow and this should get us up and running. Looks like everything installed and worked correctly. So next, we actually have to see if subscribed users are showing up on one signal. We can't actually do this on an iOS emulator device, but I'm going to do this on my own device over here. Unfortunately, you might not be able to see this, but please believe me when I say it will work. If you have your own physical iPhone, you can run the simulator by going to Xcode and scrolling up here and selecting your iPhone. Then you simply build the project. It'll take a little bit of time to compile, but then you'll have a version on your phone. You'll actually be able to use this then by disconnecting the cable and even running it through Wi-Fi, which is very useful. Let's do this now just to kick off the one signal subscriber check. So I've got it up and running on my physical phone. I'm going to try this button again and see if, if it identifies it. And yes, it looks like it has. So now we can click done and we've set it up on the iOS device. We'll now have a look at some functionality we can add into OneSignal by configuring React Native. OneSignal allows you to set up a number of different functions to happen when you actually push a notification out, as well as when you select it, when you open it, and all the other things that happen. In here, we see all the functionality that you can set up. Let's copy all of this across. Let's open up our VS Code here, and let's go into our app folder. In here, let's paste the new constructor method along with all the settings. The only thing we'll copy across here is our initial app ID. The rest should be automatic. So what we can see here is we have a receiver and this function is called when a push notification is received. Right now, we'll just console log it. There's another one if the person actually opens it, which is down here. It's got some more information, such as what was the push notification, if there's actual information in there, and if the app was opened while the push notification was received. And finally, we also can collect the ID for the phone. This is very useful later if you wanna do push notifications to certain people. So, the moment of truth. Let's go to the messaging option on one signal. We're going to do a push notification. We'll click new push and we'll set up a test notification here called test push notification. We'll add in a body such as hello, this worked. And then we'll actually push it out to all devices currently set up, which is down here. So looks like I got that. That's great. Now, you might not be able to do this in a simulated device because Apple doesn't exactly approve of it, but on physical devices, it definitely works. So in large organizations, you might have lots of users and you don't wanna do a push notification to everyone. In that case, we can set up a test group. We can go to audience and select all users. And in there, we can find the people that we wanna send a push notification to. In this case, we want to do one to myself on my physical and my iOS device. iOS isn't supported, but let's have a look at how you do this. You select options and you click add to test users. In here, you can put in Adrian and that'll add it to a test group. So the next time that you wanna do a push notification, you simply go to messages You'll click create new push notification. And after you've set it up, you can actually click here to do a send test devices. And that way we can make sure that the push notification is going to do what you want it to do. 
So we've had a good look at how to set up the push notifications on iOS. In the next video, we'll have a look at how to set this up on Android because that's just as important, but the setup's a little bit different because you actually have to set up Firebase and configure it a little bit differently too. So if you like this kind of content, if you want more like it, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.